This one's a, a, a little bit. This one's a little bit longer, uh, but it's uh, but it gives you an insight into into Ozark humor, kind of a, a subtle kind of of Ozark uh, humor that uh, that's still very funny today, but it's a, it's a humor that you have to kind of pay close attention to and, and figure out uh, what's going on. It says one time there was a feller named Jack. And he, and he aired a lot of money when his folks died off. He, he inherited a lot of money. But he didn't have much sense, so he went into town and bought him a saloon. So I guess, you know, if you go to town and buy a saloon, that means you don't have much sense. The first day he run the saloon, there was a town fellow come in, and he says, give me some whiskey. Jack set him out a glass of whiskey and says, that'll be 15 cents. But the town fellow says, 15 cents is too much, and he'll take three, be- three beers instead because beers only cost a nickel. So Jack poured the whiskey back in the bottle and gave him three beers. The town fellow drunk the beers, and then he started out. Jack says, you owe me 15 cents for them three beers. And the town fellow says, how do you figure that? Didn't I trade you the whiskey for them beers? Jack, he says, yes, but you never paid me for the whiskey. The town fellow says, of course not, because I never drunk the whiskey. You poured it back in the bottle. I seen you with my own eyes, and I'll swear to it in court. And then the town fellow went out the door. Jack, he sat there a long time studying about it and counting his money. He knowed he was 15 cents short, but he couldn't figure out how the town fellow had done it so slick. The next day, there was two town fellows come in, and one of them bought a glass of beer. He throwed a dollar bill on the bar, and Jack gave him 95 cents change. Just then, the other fellow says, Here, I want a beer too, and both of them is on me. Give my friend his dollar back and take him out of this. And he throwed a silver dollar on the bar. So Jack gave the first fellow his dollar bill back, and he gave the second fellow a glass of beer and 90 cents change. So then the two fellows went on a talking and laughing, but Jack was counting his money, and he seen something was wrong. So he says, boys, I made a little mistake in your change. The town fellow thought, fellows thought about it a minute, and then one of them says, yes, you took a nickel out of my friend's dollar, and you took a dime out of my dollar. That makes 15 cents for the two beers, and two beers is only 10 cents, so you owe us a nickel. Jack begun to scratch his head again, and the town fellow says, Oh, never mind, what's a nickel between friends? You can keep the change, he says. And then the two fellows went out the door, and he could hear them laughing away down the street. Poor Jack, he sat there a long time studying on it and counting his money. He knowed he was 95 cents short, but he couldn't figure out how them town fellows done it so slick. On the third day, a town girl come in, and she says, I'm in a big hurry, and my father is very sick, and he sent me after a pint of Razorback wine. And it cost 75 cents. And she throwed a $20 bill on the bar. Jack handed down the bottle and gave her $19.25 change. There must be some mistake, she says. I only give you a, a dollar bill. Jack looked in the drawer right quick. No, ma'am, it's 20, says he. The pretty girl opened her little pocketbook again. My goodness, she says. I must have pulled out Pappy's $20 bill by accident. Give me the 20 back and take the wine out of this. And she throwed a $1 bill on the bar. Jack gave her back the $20 bill, and out of the door she went. She was in such a hurry, she forgot her 25 cents change. Jack stood there a minute with a quarter in his hand, and he says to himself, Well, it is a shame to shortchange a pretty girl like that, but I am 25 cents ahead anyhow. And then he got to thinking and counted the money in the drawer again. He was $19 short, and this time Jack seen just how the town girl done it, so he run out in the street to catch her, but she was plumb out of sight. On the fourth day, Jack sold the saloon back to the fellow he bought it from. Three days of saloon keeping is all I could stand, says he. Them town people as nimble as a weasel and crooked as a barrel of snakes and the women is worse than the men. In a couple days more, they would have got the gold filling out of my teeth, he says. So then Jack went back to the farm where he ought to have stayed in the first place. And that's the end of the story. So that's a, that's a Jack story. What do, you, what do you see? I mean, that's another uh, common sort of uh, type of story. What's the moral of that story, do you think? For people telling it in the Ozarks. Stay on the farm. Could be stay on the farm. That's where you belong. <coughs> Could be something else, maybe. Be careful in town. Don't get hornswoggled. City people are wily. So be on the lookout when you, when you go to town. Probably something to, you know, probably something to do with that. 
And it, it could very well be we country people have a, have a place and it's here on the farm and let's just stay here and we won't get took by all the, the weaselly city people out there. 